Okay, this screen cam recording is going to have a quick look at an operation amplifier. Specifically, we're going to look at open loop gain and gain bandwidth product. So let's just uh, move on and let's have a little look at what we're going to do. Here's the first circuit that we're looking for. I've got a very, very, very small signal. I've got one microvolt. Okay. Reason I'm using one microvolt is I don't want to saturate this op amp. This op amp is powered by minus 15 volts and plus 15 volts. We're feeding the signal into the inverting input. The non-inverting input is connected to ground. I've got a very small resistor here, or well, reasonable resistor, RL on the output, uh, V out, so I can actually see um, the signal coming out of my op amp. So what I'm trying to do is I'm going to try and have a look and see if I can get this little graph here. This is log frequency and normally it goes at the top and then it comes back down. They often call this at the top here the open loop gain and the bottom here they call that the gain bandwidth product. And then you've got various levels of bandwidth for various amounts of gain. So we're going to try and find out what that looks like. So I'll come out of um, PowerPoint. <coughs> what I've got for you here is AUCAD. I'm using the light version of AUCAD, which is a, a free uh, version to show you what you can do inside the AUCAD tool. Here's my one microvolt signal, my op amp, and I'm going to look at my output. I've labeled them V in open loop gain and V out open loop gain because I've got more on one circuit diagram. Let's open the simulation. AC sweep noise. So what I've got here, I've got 1 hertz to 10 megahertz and I've got 100 points per decade. Click OK. Click Save. I always like to click Save to make sure I know what I'm doing. Now, what I've also done is I've got some equations ready to go. So here, look, I'm looking at this equation here, which is the decibels V of voltage of the, the wire labeled V out OLG, so that's this point in dB, minus dB V, a voltage of V in OLG. Move that one over here, and there's that wire here. So this expression here will show me the, um, the gain in effect for this circuit and be able to plot it once it's simulated. So I'm going to copy that to the clipboard, go to here. Let's hit simulate, and my simulation window has come up behind. Here we are. Let's add a trace to this simulation window. I like to turn off all the voltage and current, uh, the currents and power and things, and just focus on the detail. I can look at any of these nodes of the circuit, and I can use any of these expressions. I'm choosing the dB of the voltage V out OLG minus the dB of the voltage of the input. So that's the output dB over the input dB. Let's click OK. So here we've got our peak signal, about 104 decibels. We're rolling off here we're at a pretty constant rate. It looks very similar to a low pass filter, 20 dBs per decade. And we're crossing somewhere around this hot 1 megahertz region. Let me plot the input uh, signal uh, as a reference. And to that signal, which is 1 microvolt, I've added 120 dBs because then that should show me 0 dB. So this is the input signal, so normalized. So this is what the gain is of this amplifier as we go across all of these frequencies until we hit gain bandwidth product. So you can see this simulation is very powerful and very, very useful. Well, let's have a look back again in uh, PowerPoint. Let's go back to here. And I want to show you what that means. Okay, so let's move on. And here, there's a couple of things we've got here. We've got um, the output signal. Well, what I'm going to do just before I actually uh, go and show that one, this green line is what you've seen before. And I'm going to put a straight line approximation on the top. And I'm going to use this line here to create a straight line approximation for this response. And there we go. And now we'll go to our point. So, what can we see or what can we say about this particular response? Well, if we were to look at this frequency 
and this frequency, we're at 1 kilohertz and we're at 10 kilohertz. So this is one decade. This is uh, 60 dBs and this one is 40 dBs. So we're going down by minus 20 dBs per decade. So this is behaving like a first order low pass filter. And that's quite important because what you should realize is the internal structure of an op operational amplifier actually has a filter, a compensation capacitor, so it behaves like this. The break frequency here, estimated, could be around about the 4 hertz mark, maybe 5 hertz, somewhere around there. General guidelines would say it's about 10 hertz, and that's not too far away. Over here, we're about 1 megahertz, although we are a little bit before 1 megahertz. We could be about 900 hertz there, looking at the differences in that. So what you're seeing here is the effect of gain bandwidth product, which is this point, which is often where the gain is equal to 1. So a ratio of 1 is equal to 0 dB. And at the top here, we've got a a maximum gain, which I think for the 741 was 104 dBs. So we've proven that using this circuit simulation. Well, let's move on a little bit. Let's do something a little bit more, uh, a little bit cleverer. I've configured this operational amplifier. I'm, I'm sending my signal into the inverting input. My non-inverting input is connected to ground. My inverting input is connected with the feedback resistor. So I've got an RF and I've got R in. Now, as you already know, the gain of a, an inverting amplifier is minus RF over R in, and that's what I've encoded over here in design parameters. So I'm saying the gain is one, my input resistor is 1K, please calculate the value of RF. Now, not many people remember what this is supposed to be. This is a bias resistor, and it's supposed to nullify any currents that are flowing into the op amps. So if, there's an, uh, if there's an offset current here, we want the same offset current here to keep the op amp balanced. That is what RB is actually doing. It's like a balancing resistor. If you do the maths, you'll work out that it's equal to uh, the RN component down to ground and the RF effectively down to ground. So they look like they're in parallel, which is where this equation has come from. So what am I going to do with this circuit? Well, I've got a very, very, very small signal going in, one microvolt. But here I've got a design parameter called gain. So I can change the value of gain in simulation. I can change it to any value I choose and it will recalculate the components. So then my output signal V out gain bandwidth product will be a function of the gain equation that I set in. So let's look at how that's deployed in AUCAD. So coming out of um, PowerPoint and let's see what AUCAD actually makes of that. I'll close this simulation down. Now I've got it on the same circuit diagram just down here. So these are what we call design parameters. This resistor, R in, curly brackets, is assigned a value by this design parameter over here. R in equals 1 kilo ohm. I've got a value here, gain equals 1. Over here I've got RF, a feedback resistor, curly brackets. And RF is equal to gain times R in. Okay, so I can change the value of gain or R in and RF will recalculate. The bias resistor RB will do the same thing. It's a little bit more complicated though. So this is a very, very useful way of using the AUCAD tool and design parameters to uh, you know, aid your simulation. Let's put up the simulation. Okay, what we were simulating before was between one hertz and 10 megahertz, 100 ohm steps. What I want to do now is I want to have the variable gain included. So I'm gonna do a parametric sweep with a global parameter called gain. And I've got a value list here of a gain of 1, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, and 1 million, which I probably can't achieve. So I'm doing what is called a family of curves, or a family sweep. Hit simulate. Okay, and let's have a look 
at my tool. Now my tool hasn't loaded one simulation because it's got all of these simulations that it can load. And I can select one of them, I can select all of them. Okay, now I want all of them uh, on one trace to show you what's going on. Click OK. And as I said before, I've got this nice little equation already written. So I'm now looking at the output signal in dBs minus the input signal in dBs. And I'm going to add that trace to this plot. So what has just happened? The green waveform is where gain is equal to 1. So you see it's rolling off just a bit before 1 megahertz. So the, the, the effectual load of the, those impedances is causing it to just break before the gain bandwidth product. When I have a gain of 10, we move across. We've got a gain of a ratio gain of 10 is dB20. And then we hit this curve and roll down at our gain bandwidth product. So as an estimation, we've got 100 kilohertz with a gain of 10. Let's look at 40 dBs, which is a gain of 100. We roll across, and we appear to be rolling off at 10 kilohertz. 10,000 times 100 equals gain bandwidth product, 1 million. Gain of 60 dBs is 1,000. Bandwidth, 1,000. Gain of 80 dBs, okay, 10,000. Bandwidth, 100. And this blue line here, gain of 100, uh, gain of... Ah, you see, that's actually just slightly failed, that blue one there. So that can't quite hit the 20 dBs. So we're reaching the limits of what the op-amp can actually do. So what you get to the edge is, it's not quite precise. In theory, it should roll off at 10 hertz. But of course, our break frequency is around there. And then the gain of 1 million, we can't achieve. We're getting a gain of 104 dB, which is around about 200,000, which is what the op-amp can actually produce. So if I go back now to my PowerPoint, I've got that plotted here. So what's happening? If I pick this curve here, this is 60 dBs of gain, which is equivalent to 1000. And if we look at the break frequency, we've got about a minus 3 dB point here which comes down and hits 1 kilohertz. So gain bandwidth product is 1,000 times 1,000, which equals 1 million. Okay, and that's the gain bandwidth of this op-amp. So anywhere I am on this amplifier, if I choose a gain here of 20 dBs, this line, my 3 dB point hits here, I can have a bandwidth of 100 kilohertz. So gain times bandwidth uh, will always equal the value for the op-amp gain bandwidth product. Now the 741 has a gain bandwidth product equal to 1 megahertz. Okay, and uh, We can see that on this green line here, but there's, there's little effects inside the circuit or inside the model of this operational amplifier, so it doesn't quite get there, but that's just one of those experimental errors. So I hope this quick screen cam gave you a bit of an insight into gain and bandwidth. And you've also seen how you use AUCAD to do a bowed plot. But then you can do this family of curves plot as well. So I hope that's quite useful. That's the end of this little screen cam.